I don't know if you've heard, but there's a special version of Super Mario World that has widescreen support, and I just so happen to have a widescreen CRT. So I'm going to show off not only how to set it up on your system, but I'm going to show you what it would look like if you had a widescreen CRT like me. And you know what? It looks pretty dang cool. Let's roll that intro. So here we are at GitHub for the wide S NES. This is Super Mario World the widescreen, okay? I showed it off in the intro. Now I'm gonna show off how to actually get everything set up. So this, of course, is Super Mario World widescreen, which plays the game in 16 by nine. This is possible by expanding the horizontal resolution by 96 pixels, which will increase the resolution from this is the base to the new one. Since the original SNES doesn't support that, we need to use an emulator. This specific emulator is called BSNES-HD, and you are going to need to download that. Now, it does currently support both 16 by nine and by 10, so if you wanna get a little wider, you can do that, and they're trying to do really wide. You can't do that yet, though. I have a 16 by nine resolution display, and I'm going to be showing that off in this video. So to start, you're going to wanna to download pretty much all this stuff okay you need to download a patch for the game they cannot provide the game to you pre-patched because they do not own the game they however are allowed to own the patch because it doesn't contain the copyright in the game then you need to uh, actually patch it and get the game if you want to get the game Google had to get the game. I'm not gonna link it because I don't own the copyright and I don't wanna get in trouble. But you should probably be able to figure it out pretty easily. Next, you'll need to download a widescreen configuration file. This is something that's going to go alongside your ROM and it's going to tell the emulator how to make everything work fine. Then you'll need to download the actual emulator. So I'm not gonna be using RetroArch. Apparently there's a beta core in there. I don't know, I don't use it. Don't care, not gonna show it off. So the first thing, the patch. If you don't download the patch, you click on the patch. Now patching the ROM. To download that stuff, we will be redirected to a different website that'll kind of explain to us what we wanna do. Pretty much skip to step three if you're following along with me. We are going to use a thing called flips. To get flips, you will click on here and then you will download that. And then again, I'm gonna show you everything. Don't even worry about this. Now you need our widescreen file. Now for this, it didn't let me auto download. See, it redirects me to this. This is not what we want. To be able to avoid that, I scroll up to the actual file right here. What you can actually do is you can save the link. Now I've decided to keep everything together. So what you can go ahead and do is in this folder, this is what it's going to be called by default. I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm gonna do .bso and then do all files and it'll automatically set everything up to where it'll be this special BSO file because it's essentially just a text file. And then the next thing that we're going to want is we are going to want to download the emulator. So from here, you have a ton of different options for ways to play it. I am playing on Windows, so I'm going to use this Windows zip and you can go ahead and download that and save it. All right, so let's go ahead and go over our files. So right here, I have the emulator, I have the patcher, and then I have the files that correspond with that. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is we will open up the patcher and we'll go ahead and click on flips. And this tiny little window is what we're going to use. So we're going to apply patch. So it's going to ask us whenever we click on this to find the patch. Here is the patch, we click on it. Next, it'll ask, which file are we patching? We want to grab our Super Mario World. This is a USA. This is the one that we want. We will do that. And now it's asking, what do you want this new file to be? What do we want it to be called? How do we want to save it? Where do we want to save it? It by default changes the name to what the patch was called, which is good. We want to go ahead and keep it as that name. And then you can just hit save and it'll all be set up. So that's how you patch it. We have our files now. Here's our original. And here are the modified files that we've been using. And now we can go ahead and go into our emulator. So by default, this is how everything looks. Shouldn't be anything too complicated here. What we can go ahead and do is we can actually just open it up. 
from here, I will go ahead and hit a load game. This is where my files are. This is the original game. This is the new widescreen version. We will go ahead and open that up. It says, hey, you're not playing in the right aspect ratio, which you could probably tell because I got this weird box. And so it is going to look weird. But if we go ahead and full screen it, you can see it looks pretty dang good. Now, I did change some settings and I will run you through that right now. And these settings are by default. The size is very small. It's very small. So it really doesn't matter which size you put it at because we're going to be changing it anyway. But that way you can have it be a little bigger. Now the output, we are gonna have it to stretch so that it'll actually fill up our resolution because again, you can see this default that I'm doing is not the right aspect ratio, but it'll fix itself. And then by default, it has a shader on to make it look blurry, like an old game, I guess. I don't know. I don't know why you would want that. If you want to put that on, put it on. If you want to mess with save states or anything, by all means, feel free to do that. If you want to configure a controller, it by default already has some stuff configured. You can go through here and configure it how you like. Though, by doing some of these stuff, you can also make some changes like right here. You can map your controller. I'm just gonna use the default keyboard. I don't really care to set up a controller right now. And now we're pretty much good to play. So I will go ahead and swap over to the CRT. So here we are at the HD CRT. As you can tell, there is a little bit of overscan going on. Tops, bottom, sides, pretty much everywhere is cut off a little bit. It doesn't mess with the game at all. I mean, you can see a little bit of the border on the main menu. And the border set up to be cut off. Like, they, uh, <laughs> that's not like a integral, like part of the gameplay experience is having the border. So obviously everything works fine on this. I might be able to adjust it on my end and have it run in a different manner. But I, I mean, I'm, I'm happy with this. This looks really cool. Uh, it runs super well. I still am going to make a video lag testing my HD CRT and seeing if that like has any uh, effects, seeing if there's any noticeable differences between using an HD or CR an HD CRT and a normal one. But I don't really feel like there's a huge difference. I definitely don't feel like there was a bunch of like delay or anything while I was playing on here. Now, I don't play well on here at all. Uh, um, I actually, I have my keyboard, so I didn't want to set up a controller because I would have to like do a Bluetooth setup because I don't have like a controller dongle anywhere near me and I didn't want to have to mess with any of that. So I'm actually just playing over my shoulder. Like I have my keyboard and my desk on one wall and then the CRT, I have to like turn my head. You, can you hear my voice change? I have to turn my head around to look and play and uh, the buttons are kind of weird on here. So I'm not doing great. This is actually like, I legitimately practiced a little bit. Like I messed up a recording. So I had like 10 minutes of gameplay before this where I did dramatically worse than this and I'm already not doing great on this. So as you can see, I just fell. So it's not great. Um, I will say it's a fun time. If you have the opportunity to try this out on PC or on a CRT or whatever, just just go for it. You know, it's fun playing video games and we should be able to play them in a bunch of different ways. It's really nice to be able to see different tweaks to existing games. That's something I'm really big on. A lot of people are really big on game preservation in this scene, which is amazing. And I, of course, am into that, but also just being able to experience these older things in different ways to get people to kind of go back to them, I think is very valuable. I appreciate new art, but I also really feel like we have, I mean, honestly, in a lot of these mediums, we have enough like just stuff hanging around to where you're never going to be able to experience them all anyway. So you might as well just like mess around with some older stuff and, uh, really get a feel for not just how things used to be but like how you can experience them now just like this this isn't like oh i'm just going back and playing an old game we're using new stuff with this old game and it adds a bunch of life into it you know there's just a completely different experience than what you would have gotten before um i just fell again so i'm probably gonna stop um but thank you so much for watching 
Thank you for checking this out. If you have any suggestions for any future content you want to see, please let me know. I'm going to go back to Yoshi's Island 1 and uh, maybe up. Oh. <laughs> All right. I'm done. Goodbye. <laughs>